Well, it's the 2nd of February, 2021, and we're just departing Calabria here. And we got, uh, you can, if you can see it, that's Vieques, that long island there. And uh, during the Second World War, the U.S. Navy used to use this island for target practice. They pretty much shelled the ass out of it. And, uh, but it's all grown back now. And I think they've gotten all the unexploded ordinances out. It's pretty safe to visit. Um, and there are some hurricane holes there. I've known people who've weathered hurricanes in Vieques. Oh, there's mangrove swamps you can get into. So, but uh, what are we going southeast winds? About just about forecast, uh, 12, 13 knots. Nice sailing. We're back on the road again. God, it always feels good to be back on the road again. And, uh, you know, after doing this, uh, well, we're, we're still only about three quarters of the way done with this complaint around the Atlantic, but sometimes I get thinking, you know, I'm getting tired of going through the whole routine of putting to sea again. And then, uh, and then you get a day like this and you say, yeah, I'd rather be out here than doing anything else. This is just beautiful. Nice temperature, nice breeze, nice sailing. So, it's a nice day today. What a relief to get out of that narrow passage. That was a bit of a talking drill. So, hopefully we'll be in Salinas early tomorrow morning. We've got a long night ahead of us. But uh, we enjoy it. Uh, we enjoy the nice weather while it lasts. Approach Salinas in the morning of February 3rd, 2021. Today is Wednesday. So we're gonna get inside these uh, this these outer fringing islands here. I, I could cut cut between them. You can see where the boats are anchored, that's the anchorage. But uh, I prefer to just play it safe and go by the lee side. There's a fair bit of swell rolling in here. So I'd rather just duck around the lee side of these islands and get into flatter water and uh, then sail for the sail for the anchorage.
So Salinas turned out to be quite a nice stop. It's a very well protected anchorage. And there's plenty of room to anchor, at least when I was there. And up at the head of the bay, there's a small marina, Marina de Salinas, where for $35, you can get a pass to use the dinghy dock, the showers, laundry, water tap, and trash disposal. And it's about a one mile walk from the marina to an Econo supermarket. So you got everything you need. And uh, I would put Salinas down on my list of recommended stops if you're cruising the south coast of Puerto Rico. So I stayed a little over a week in Salinas before it felt like it was time to weigh anchor and continue on my west-northwestward trek. Well, I was going to get drone footage of taking off, but then I saw that sucker there. I say the wind is picked up, so it's probably just as well I didn't. Just as well I got my bird out of the sky there, because it might have been a tricky recovery. So we're just heading out of Salinas here, and uh, there's some shoal water that juts out. We just got to be mindful of that. And we're still working our way out from Salinas here. I don't know if you can see right under the lee, there's a line of breakers. There's a big reef right there. And uh, the south coast of Puerto Rico has quite a few of such dangers. Um, the upside is, is that uh, with lots of islands and reefs, it also means there's lots of nice anchorages. Uh, it's much more hospitable than the north coast, which is much more just there's the land, there's the water. And the problem is there's not many places to duck in, not many places you can escape the swell. And uh, you can see we're rolling here. We got big trade wind swell. Um, so uh, you got to pay attention to your navigation, but hopefully we'll, we'll find some nice anchorages along here. It certainly looks like well, it's it. It's been about 45 minutes to an hour since I last squalled. So here comes the next one. And, uh, so I say, whenever, whenever you get these strong trade winds, which is what we got now, sustained winds, upper teens, mid 20s, um, you get constant squalls. And they seem to come through about every half hour to an hour, more so in the morning. They seem to ease off in the afternoon. Um, and uh, I'm told the reason is, is that the strong winds is it picks the moisture up off the ocean. Uh, so that warm moist air scoops it up and then it, it uh, whacks into the cool air, the upper, the higher altitudes. And so then that, that forms clouds and develops into rain squalls. sure is picturesque. So right around the corner here is an anchorage that was recommended by a cruiser on Facebook. So, so we're just going to go around the corner and kind of take a peek. I'm still a little skeptical. I think it might be a bit rolly. But there's another marked anchorage on the chart that's uh, much better protected. So if this doesn't work out, we'll, we'll sail into that one. The anchorage looked a little rolly. So I think we're going to get into this one up here, which is enclosed by reefs. However, we got to go through a little bit of a cut here. You can see it on the chart. We're headed right for it, that little cut between the reefs. And then uh, we should be in nice flat water once we get inside there. That always makes things a lot easier when you're not rolling in a swell. Chart plotter seems to have the eastern edge, well, the western edge of the eastern part of the channel marked. Just looking where the breakers are. It's definitely a little nerve wracking here. I'm just hoping, just hoping my chart is accurate. I got a little confused for a minute there and panicked jived away, but I think I see it now. I think we're in the 
we're in the clear water. And that's what our chart plotter is saying too. Just going through reef passes. I'm just a proverbial cat on a hot tin roof. Phew. So we made it in through the reef pass without hitting anything. We have a little wider area here to tack up toward the anchorage. But there's still plenty of shells, so we have to watch our navigation. And the water is not too clear. So I have to rely on the chart plotter and, and just hope that those charts are accurate. So this was quite a tranquil anchorage, and I stayed there for two days, partly just to recover from that brisk sail. Um, and uh, though it's very placid this morning, I'm going to keep that second reef in the mainsail, as the weather models are telling me there's plenty of wind once we get outside. The upside is that I can keep my drone in the air so we can get a bird's eye view of weighing anchor under sail. So anchors away and the light breezes. Well, not quite. Almost anchors away. And in the light breezes, it's going to take her a while to fall off the wind and gather speed. And I'm resisting the siren call of shaking the reefs out of the main because uh, we will get into plenty of wind soon enough. Oh, it's what a beautiful, peaceful morning. It's a very pretty spot. As you can see, there's nobody. I was here for two days. Nobody, nobody came in and anchored her. And it's, uh, it's plenty of room to anchor. This, this, this reef along here completely knocks out the swell, so you don't roll. We're gonna start rolling pretty soon once we get out from under the protection of the, of the reef. Coming up on Cabo Rojo here. It doesn't look too red to me. But maybe by the dawn's early light it lights up red. I believe that means red cape. It certainly is quite picturesque, especially with the lighthouse. This leaves us with about uh, 10 miles to go to Pokeron. 